So as our last one, uh, last problem on this section, we're going to see how you can solve this kind of system of three equations and three unknowns using the two different approaches that we looked at. Okay, so the first approach is to basically solve and substitute. Okay, so let's solve for, I guess we've already solved for z, but that's not actually going to be that useful. Let's solve for x. Okay, so to do that we can say, let's use this first equation, this looks really useful for that. We have x over y equals z, which tells us that x, if we multiply both sides by y, we get that x is equal to z times y, because they cancel out there. All right, now we're going to substitute this into one of our equations and see if that tells us anything useful. So we've got y over x is equal to z, and we know that x is equal to z times y, so we've got y over uh, z times y is equal to z, and this is actually surprisingly useful. So we know that these y's cancel out, and we end up with 1 over z is equal to z. We're now already down to one equation and one unknown, so we should be able to find what z is equal to. So if I multiply both sides by z, like I did here, I get these z's cancel and I have z squared equals one. And I need to get rid of that exponent and I can do that by taking the square root, which is, you know, taking both sides to the power of one half. One to the one half power is still one because one times one is equal to one. And I get that z is equal to one, okay? Now that I know that z is equal to 1, I can find my x pretty easily. Oh, no, I can't because I need to know y first. So we, we have to keep going. Let's plug this answer down here and see what we can find using this piece of information and now this piece of information. So instead of x, we'll write 2 times zy and then times 4 times z equals 10. And we know z is equal to 1, so we can change this to 2 times y. That z is equal to 1, plus 4 is equal to 10. And we can subtract 4 from each side. And we get 2y is equal to 10. And let's scroll up a little bit here. We should find that uh, y is equal to 5 in this case. I'm sorry, this should be a 6 when you subtract 4 from both sides. So if we divide by 2, we get y equals 3. And now we can look back up here, and we had that x is equal to z times y. So x is equal to z, which is 1, times y, which is 3. So x is equal to 3. We've achieved what we wanted to do. We've got x equal to 3, y is equal to 3, and z is equal to 1. None of them, we're not, you know, at this stage where x was equal to zy, even though we had x on its own, we hadn't finished the problem because the answer is still dependent on z and y. At this stage, we've actually finished it because we've got them all down to numbers. If you don't actually have three equations to go with your three unknowns, then you're not going to be able to get to this step. Anyway, let's now solve it the other way, okay? So, just as a refresher, we have x over y equals z. We've got y over x equals z. And we've got uh, what is it? 2x plus 4z equals 10. So method two is going to be, I'm going to call this divide to eliminate. So in this case, I want to eliminate one of the variables by exploiting the fact that if I can divide out, I can sort of get rid of it. Or I want to add or subtract the equations. If I divide the top, two, the top equation by the bottom equation, I can eliminate z because on the right-hand side, I have z divided by z, which is 1. So I have x divided by y divided by y divided by x equals z divided by z. You're maybe not used to dividing equations by each other, but remember, all we're really saying is like, take this first equation, divide both sides by z. That's what we've got written down over here. But 
On the left-hand side, since z is equal to y over x, let's just write that instead. That'll turn out to be more useful. So this is equal to 1 because z divided by z is 1. And on the right-hand side, or sorry, the left-hand side, we have x divided by y. And since we're dividing by y over x, we can sort of multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so we're dividing by y, so we've still got y on the bottom. And we're also dividing by 1 over x, which is the same as multiplying by x. You can see we've got x over y squared, so this is just x squared over y squared. All right, and this tells us right away that x squared equals y squared, which tells us that x is equal to y. Technically, it could also be that uh, x is equal to negative y. That would also satisfy this equation. But in econ, we don't usually deal with negative quantities, so these kind of cases don't matter that much in this course. Uh, once we know that x is equal to y, we can go back to our first equation, and we can see that that must mean that z is equal to 1, because x divided by x is equal to z, and z is equal to 1. Or x divided by x, which we could substitute out y here, would be equal to 1, and that tells us z is equal to 1. So we've got our first equation here. We're going to use that over here. We have 2x plus 4 equals 10, and 2x, if we subtract 4 from each side, we get 6. So we get x equals 3, and since x is equal to y, we know that y must also be equal to 3. So we got the same solution uh, using this divide to eliminate. Uh, depending on your preferences, one could be easier than the others, but there are some problems that we do in this course that are definitely easier with this divide and conquer, especially when there's lots of ratios of exponents. And we'll come to that when we do, um, you know, we'll come to that later.